Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge and our Goss project rolls on. Uh, today I have completed the amphibious invasion stage and uh, wanted to share my thoughts with you on that and my reaction to it. Uh, the amphibious invasion stage is a uh, just like the airborne drop stage, a kind of a pre-game module. Uh, they're, they're almost kind of mini games in and of themselves to help resolve the, um, the assault waves that hit the beaches early on the morning of June 6th. And um, there's, uh, there's a lot going on in this module. I thought the rules were, uh, for the most part, uh, decently written. Uh, they're, they're well organized, but uh, not quite as clear in some areas as the, as the airborne rules were. Uh, I found myself referring back to the amphibious uh, rules module much more than I did with the amphibious module. But uh, I think eventually figured it out. And got into the flow of it. Uh, it's a it's, it's it's very procedural. There are a ton of uh, of dice rolls that have to be made, and it is probably ninety nine percent a solitaire um, endeavor. So let's talk a little bit more about about this in some detail and I'll show you um, hopefully with uh, some of the beach displays that we still have going on uh, exactly what uh, what I'm talking about here so let's uh, let's dive in and take a look now to start off with the amphibious invasion stage has its own sequence of play and there are I think about eight steps in uh, in that sequence of play and it is it is it is pretty detailed uh, you are going to start off with a landing segment where you're going to have to check for losses to the invading units due to beach obstacles then uh, once everybody has uh, made those checks which consists basically of uh, die rolls uh, rolled on a on a chart uh, cross-referenced with the uh, with the obstacle value for that particular subsector of the beach. That's what these red markers here indicate. And each of these, uh, you can see the boxes here. The the beach displays are made up of rows and columns of boxes, and the units will move across these um, these boxes the same way they would uh, hexes on the map. And each of these columns is a considered a subsector of the beach. So you can see here on uh, Gold Beach, we've got Jig White, Jig Green, Jig Red, King White, and so on. And the boxes down here, these white boxes are where you would have these red markers, just numerical markers to track the current obstacle value for that particular subsector of the beach. Uh, once you've done that and the units have landed on the beach, you're then going to have the Germans conduct their fire. Now the German units are composed of resistance nests and a couple of um, generic infantry companies and um, 88 batteries. And the fire from the Germans, if we look here at uh, Omaha Beach, and, and by the way, if you look at the display here, you can see by the end of the, uh, of the module, all of the beaches have been cleared except for Omaha, which is uh, kind of a bit of a mess for the Americans right now, uh, which is not to be unexpected if I read the rules correctly and, you know, is reasonably historical. So um, the German defensive units, you can see there are still plenty of them here on Omaha, are these resistance nests, and then we have some uh, infantry companies here. There's not much for the German player to do because the German fire, these resistance nests, as well as the infantry companies uh, and AT units, they will fire, they will get to fire at every single box that they are capable of firing. There are some rules that uh, go over uh, some restrictions on when they can fire. For instance, if American units are in the same box as the resistance nest, then the resistance nests may only fire at those units and not fire uh, outside of it, but normally, they're able to fire uh, at every box in their subsector all the way out to the beach here. And so you just simply proceed from box to box to box, totaling up the uh, firepower that can reach there, and then you're rolling uh, to see what the results are. After the Germans fire, the Allies will fire, which includes naval gunfire support, and then the Americans will move, then the Germans will move, although 
Uh, obviously, the resistance nests cannot move, but uh, if they have any infantry companies on the beach display, uh, they may move if they if they are active. Although I think Omaha is the only beach where the Germans actually did move any units, and the rules are are fairly restrictive on how and where those German units move. So, again. There's not much for the German player to do throughout this entire stage other than spectate. Um, after the movement's done, you will then have an assault segment where you will resolve attacks uh, with uh, Americans and Germans in the same box. And then a demolition segment where you attempt to uh, blow holes in the uh, in the seawalls on each of the beaches, as well as reduce the obstacle values for the various subsectors on the beach. And then finally, you will have a uh, pin uh, recovery uh, segment. So you run through that, but because it's the big major initial amphibious invasion, you actually have three sub-phases, which means you are going to go through that sequence of play three complete times in order to get through this module uh, initially at the, beginning of the, uh, at the beginning of the game. The end result of that is that on most of the beaches, the beaches will be cleared and um, some or all of the allied units will make their way from the beach displays that we were just looking at to these landing boxes for each of the various beaches and their sub areas. Now the, uh, the, the red spade markers I have on top of the units just indicate that they did not exit the beach display until the third uh, sub-phase of the, of the stage. If you were able to get units uh, exiting off of the beach display during the first sub-phase, they would go right here in this landing portion of the, uh, of the beach boxes. If you get them off on the second sub-phase, uh, they will go into the, uh, it's in the queue box here without a marker on them. And then if they don't get off the beach until the third sub-phase, they'll go in the, uh, in the cue box with a uh, marker on them to, to differentiate them from the units that were placed here from the uh, second sub-phase. And the effect of that, basically, the units during the Allied movement segment of the uh, June 6th AM game turn, the units in the landing box will be placed on the beach hexes themselves on the map and then be able to, uh, to move, I believe it's... Uh, Half of, with half of their movement points. If you're in the queue uh, without a, um, a marker, you can use a third of your movement, and then the units with the, uh, with the markers on them can only exit the box here onto the map after the previous two groups have done so. And there's a limit, I think it's six steps worth of units can come out of these boxes actually onto the playing area each, each turn. Um, I believe the initial uh, in the the initial June sixth AM turn the um, capacity is a little bit bigger, uh, but I know the standard is is uh, six steps. So uh, you it is entirely possible, especially with reinforcements coming in um, on subsequent game turns, for these uh, boxes to get uh, a little full here, and there be a bit of a backup, uh, literally getting off of the beach and onto the map into the fight. Now, it took me a little while, but uh, it really kind of struck me that this entire process, all of these rules, all of this gameplay, which is fairly considerable, I would say it took anywhere from maybe 15 minutes to at least half an hour um, to run through the sequence of play for the amphibious invasion. Uh, and that's then repeated three uh, three times for each of the beaches. So with five beaches, you're looking at uh, what's that? Probably maybe about an hour and a half to two hours per subphase times three. Uh, it it I really do think I wasn't watching the clock too terribly closely, but I would say that uh, five to six hours is probably a good estimate for how long it took me to get through the amphibious invasion stage. Now, granted, this is my first time doing it. There was a lot of rules lookup. I was taking it a little bit slowly at first to make sure I wasn't messing anything up. But I, even with experienced Goss players who've done this procedure 
before. I still don't see how you're going to be getting through this in anything less than three hours at best, um, probably maybe even closer to four, which is a lot of game time and a lot of effort. And really, in the end, what we're ending up with is the units that are reinforcing or arriving via the invasion are going to show up with they're the standard units uh, that uh, that are going to be on the map for the rest of the game. Some of them have some step losses. In some cases, it may be one or two step losses. Uh, in many cases, it's no step losses. And for an operational level game, I would expect that... Um, to uh, to sort of model the the amphibious invasion in the morning, m many games are just simply going to have you place the units on the beach hexes, make a die roll or two to determine how many steps they've lost, and then you're off and running. Uh, Goss has decided instead to create this enormous procedure uh, to get you basically to the same end point. And I'm wondering if um, if it's maybe not a little much. I, I was extremely positive on the airborne drop stage. I think that airborne stage is, uh, it's not only a lot of fun, uh, but it's interesting. There are uh, some actual gameplay decisions that need to be made. I got to the amphibious stage and it was just an awful lot of die rolling uh, and not much in the way of actual gameplay or decision making, really for either player. Yes, the allied player has more decisions to make as, as far as where he's going to try to um, assault the beaches and, and uh, make his breaches in the sea walls and targeting various uh, German units uh, to try and get guys off of the beach. But a lot of it is really predetermined by the, uh, by the setup and the particular subsectors of the beaches that the, the uh, allied units land on. So I guess uh, kind of a mixed reaction to the module. I was actually pretty stunned when um, I was placing the American units here on Utah Beach. The um, There's a bit of a fiddly process to get units off of the beach displays and onto the map because when you are on the beach displays, and let me see if I can show you this, when you're on the beach displays, you're not using the standard units. You are using uh, generic, what they call invasion units. And these are just generic companies, you can see here, with uh, movement and assault values that uh, really have nothing to do with the main uh, rules. And before any of these invasion units here can exit the uh, the display to go into the beach landing boxes on the main map, you have to convert them back into their standard units. Now, it's not a complex process, but it is a little funky. And of course, it's another step uh, that you have to go through. But when I was done uh, with that process and was placing the uh, the American units primarily from 4th Infantry Division. I think there are a couple of uh, battalions from the 90th Infantry Division as well in here. But when I went through and looked at the losses that they had suffered, I was kind of stunned to see that they actually matched up almost identically to the historical losses of, uh, of the Americans that morning on Utah Beach, which I think, hey, I mean, that's fantastic uh, hat tip to the designers for putting together a system that's going to yield results that uh, that match to the historical results so well. So it's not that I necessarily uh, think the system is is bad. It's really it's not all bad at all. Uh, it is a lot of die rolling. It can get monotonous and repetitive. That's kind of the two downsides. It's just maybe too much of a good thing, um, if you will. And I'll say I'm just glad to be done with it and finally able to move on to the first actual standard Goss turn because uh, I've been itching to, uh, to see what the system itself looks like. And so far with the uh, airborne module, it's a little distinct subsect of, uh, of Goss that doesn't use really any of the main rules for movement or combat. 
And likewise, the amphibious invasion module, same thing, specialized rules for movement and uh, combat. They even have the specialized units. Um, the one thing I was also a little disappointed with with the, uh, with the invasion stage uh, procedure is that I didn't really get a, I didn't get a feeling of the distinct personalities of, uh, of the different beaches because historically each of the beaches was different. They all had uh, their own characteristics and problems that the Allies faced as part of uh, getting ashore uh, the morning of the 6th and that didn't really kind of come through with the possible exception of Omaha Beach, which uh, so far feels like it has been absolutely brutal for the Americans. Um, and if we head back over, you'll see they still have quite a ways to go before they uh, can consider this beach cleared. Most of the resistance nests are still intact. And at this point, at the end of the amphibious um, invasion stage, uh, which I would say probably puts us somewhere in the late morning of June 6th. They just have three companies of rangers and a single company of uh, infantry that have made it to the top of the bluffs here on uh, on Omaha. They've taken uh, quite a number of casualties. They've probably taken more casualties than I think all other four beaches combined so far. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes um, the Americans to kind of clear this up. Although. They are getting some momentum now. Uh, the German fire is slackening, both due to the fact that they have eliminated, uh, started to eliminate some of the resistance nests, and now they are getting uh, up close and personal with them, which is cutting down the amount of fire that they can place on the, uh, on the beach row and on the shingle here as well. So I think the Americans will get off. Uh, the 1st Infantry Division, the 29th, will be a little bit chewed up. Um, but uh, we'll see how that goes because when I get to the PM game turn on June 6th, I will come back and run through this amphibious invasion stage again prior to doing the PM game turn. And it looks like there will be another three sub phases for that. Now, fortunately, Omaha Beach is the only beach where I'll actually have to do anything because the others are all cleared. The reinforcements that are scheduled to land on those beaches will go pretty much directly into the uh, landing uh, boxes over there on the uh, on the main map. So that's kind of where things stand at this point. Um, I'm going to have to, if I were to grade just the amphibious invasion module on a scale of 1 to 10, I would probably put it at uh, maybe a 5. It's got some neat um, mechanisms, uh, but it's largely uh, just rolling dice, rolling dice, rolling dice, not a lot of opportunities for uh, some interesting decision making. And it just takes a very, very long time to get through. So in a way, I kind of wish they had uh, gone maybe a little different route, uh, because I think you can get to the same exact endpoint with, uh, with, with much less work. So let's hope that the rest of Goss is more like the airborne drop module and less like the amphibious module. But that's going to do it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. And I will uh, probably get another update out here once I, uh, once I get, into, uh, get into the actual uh, standard Goss turns and get to experience the rules, uh, the, the main portion of the rules. So thanks for watching today. Take care, and we'll see you next time.